we're going to talk about now what. Now what? I've got a site. Now what? I mean, this is like a huge question. If you guys have any questions right now, though, I need you to do me a huge favor. Any questions you have specifically for me for this particular webinar, because I'm going to be um, con <laughs> talking about a lot of stuff here, make sure you put them in the questions box on the right-hand side screen. Um, and Mama's going to help me with that, because I'm going to be going over a lot of different stuff. If you are just joining us, welcome to the New Life event. Let me go ahead and uh, pull that up over here. The New Life event is basically 30 webinars in one weekend. It is all free. Um, we have what's called the Twitter winner. And basically, you're out there. You're spreading the word. If you click on what is it, if you go to twitter-winner.com, and click on what is it. Um, we talk about all the different prizes and what we do. And there's even a little place where you can get the Twitter for Business kit free. It's got the coupon code for you. Just use Twitter and you can get that. We have an awesome, awesome ground grand prize. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that later after my webinar so that way we can get the people in. Um, into that information, but the grand prize that we're giving away every day is amazing. It's basically a business in a box, and it is phenomenal, so you're going to want to check out that as well. Make sure if you've won a prize that you go to this page and you click claim your prize. Um, the other thing that we've done is um, we've had some really amazing store owners that have donated prizes to the New Life event, and I'm so thankful. I cannot thank you guys enough. That is so awesome. And other people have asked for other ways that they could help. And I'm happy to report if you look at our navigation up here and click on store, this will take you to, um, <laughs> these are so funny, I survived the new life event. <clears throat> And I'm happy to report, the last time I checked, that we are definitely able to afford to buy a couple of books for our new New Life book club that we're going to be starting very soon. And we're going to be using the Yahoo Style Guide as our first book. And we'll be reading together, learning together. And we are going to go through that book and learn how to write on the web. And because of you guys purchasing from here, um, because of you going on our website and pressing the donate, I mean, you know, even a dollar or two helps, we're able to provide a couple of you guys free books. And it just helps because there are, you. this may be hard for you to believe for some of you, but there are some people here that it's going to be difficult for them to spend 20 to $30 on a book. So for us to be able to provide free books for this education for those who maybe cannot afford it, I think that's amazing because we are going to be helping people. All right, so you were wondering about where can you buy that book? Amazon. Amazon is where you can buy that book. Um, all right, so <laughs> let, me, let me take a quick drink here. Mm. And a couple of breaths, Shauna, please. Yes, I know. I'm, I, this is where I'm going to be very excited. Because <laughs> I'm more excited than usual. Because a lot of people, well, they, they build their site and they're just not really sure how, where to go from here. So let me, let me do a little bit of introducing myself. My name is Shauna Siegel. I'm the CEO of One Choice for Your Store. Um, if you do need help, you know, at any time, please message me at Shauna Siegel. You've got Mama's Twitter on here, too. I will tell you right now, if you send me a direct message, I probably won't read it unless you specifically say, Shauna, go read your direct message. Because with having 60,000 people on my Twitter list, they are spamming me all the time, and I can't keep up with it. But if you say, at Shauna Siegel, I sent you a DM. I will go look and dig for it. Just let me know. Uh, but you can message me there anytime, and I will definitely help whatever way I can. I always tell people how I got started. And then it's basically 11 years ago I started my first Yahoo store. And I was a single mom, living a bad marriage, working at home, trying to build this business, and trying to do it on my own. And there was an education. And I wasn't the picture-perfect mom. I was in my jammies. I was pulling out my hair. And I needed help. I absolutely needed help. 
And that's what, why I wanted to do this now what? Because there's so many people that are pulling out their hair saying, now what? I have the site, now what? Nobody's coming, nobody's buying from me, now what? All right, so this was also going on in the background, and I wish you could see what's going on in the background here. <laughs> Melissa talks about her family being, um, you know, putting together all the packages and the two-year-old taking it out. Um, my sons were my shipping managers, and they were just babies, and they were shipping managers. And, you know, here we are tonight, and is Daddy back there in his office? Oh, yeah, we're all here. Yes, <laughs> and my shipping manager. Kids, dogs. <laughs> yeah, my shipping manager um, has now become this amazing, amazing helper here at One Choice that helps our clients. His name is Andy um, for anybody who's dealt with one choice you've probably talked to my Andy and he's wonderful and he's here opening up all these Yahoo stores this weekend so that that way people can have their new stores built right away and and it's just awesome and his dogs here bringing me Diet Cokes in the collar and I love it I love it and then our other employees are coming in and coming by for the weekend and being a part of this and this is what I love. This is what it grows into. And you become bigger than what you are right now. This is just the stepping stone. And you are going to grow and do bigger things. Trust me on that. So here's what happens. People build a website and they have it up. And then all of a sudden, they just feel like they're going to click a button when they hit publish. Or they're going to click a button and all of a sudden it's going to be like, okay, I'm here. What do I do? Why am I getting no sales? Why doesn't anybody love me? And this happens all the time, okay? You really have to have patience. It's not the field of dreams. If you build it, they're not going to come. Nobody knows that you exist yet. That's the problem, and it can take three to six months for the search engines to find your website. It can take three to six months for the search engines to even know that you exist. You have to realize that when you publish that website, nobody knows. Nobody knows. It's as if you just did it, and then who, you're looking around you, and nobody knows. You have to remember that. Sales are going to start slowly, very, very slowly. So here's what's happening, and I did th I showed this at my seven o'clock, but I'm going to remind people because some of you are weren't here in seven o'clock. Okay, it's all about location online. All right, location, location, location. If I wanted to go build a brand new quilting store, because that's what we're going to talk about tonight, a quilting store in South Bend, I would have to go choose the right location. Six months ago, no, it was August. Yes, August. I started blogging about quilting because this wonderful lady opened up a sewing class two doors down from our office. Mom said, we're going to go. I fell in love with the sewing. I had sewn for so long, and I stopped. And this woman was quilting, and I said, I've always wanted to learn how to do that. And all of a sudden, this passion just it made me forget about my arthritis. Um, it made me forget about the pain that I feel every night. And I love it. And I love the fabric. So I said, you know what? I, I love this. I got to talk about it. And, and so let's say I wanted to open up a fabric store in South Bend. You know, the most important thing would be location. Where am I going to open it up so that people are going to find me? If I open it up in the mall, then people walking by are going to see this beautiful fabric. And they're going to walk in and they're going to be like, wow, I want to make something too. Or let's take Jackie, who opened up the sewing place two doors down. We are in a high traffic area because of a restaurant that's next door, believe it or not. Um, we're in a high traffic area because we're on the corner of two major streets in this town of Granger. So all these people coming by, they saw her sign. They saw her being up there, and they said, whoa, what's that, sewing classes? We all are here in a great location. But what about if we had opened up here in this back alley? Nobody would know we were there. Nobody would know that we existed unless somebody turned down the wrong street or had to go throw away their garbage. Nobody would know that we're there. So here's the problem. When you click that button and you publish, 
Nobody knows. Nobody knows that you published it. When you open your store and you say, it's been a month, I'm frustrated, I don't have any sales, I'm not getting any traffic, does anybody know that your store is in that alley? Does anybody know it's there? Have you done anything to tell people that your store is in that back alley? And if I were to go and ask those people, they would tell me, well, not really. Well, okay, now it's time for you to be a monkey. It's time for you to be a monkey standing outside on the street in a suit with the sign rolling around in circles saying, hey, look at me, I exist, I want you to come over here and check me out because this is what I have to offer you. That's what I need you to do. I need you to be the monkey in the suit. Unfortunately, what happens is most people who start a business today can't afford to pay a kid to be the monkey in the suit. And in that instance, what I'm talking about is pay-per-click. We can go out and pay for pay-per-click advertising, and we can go into all the different shopping search engines and pay a bunch of money, and we will get a lot of traffic to our site. But for most people starting out a brand new business, they can't afford to hire that monkey. So we have to be our own monkey on the street, bringing attention to our website. Okay, this is so important. How are customers going to see you? How are customers going to find you? So I'm going to go through this again. This highlighted area up here, these are the people that are able to afford the monkey. They're paying to be on top. Down here is the natural organic rankings. They don't have to pay. They've worked hard enough. They've worked long enough to get natural rankings, but that's only part of it. That's only part of the monkey suit. We have so much more to do so much more work to do. And instead of just saying, well, you need to do this and you need to do that, I thought I have to figure out a better way to teach people how to do what's next. I have to figure out a better way to show you now what. So here's what I came up with, and I hope that you like it. Let me go ahead and exit out of this. Um, what I did is I built a website and I normally for many many years I I did not like to have the website as a matter of fact I have I still own several of the websites that I had before I started one choice for your store um, but if you go in and look at the sales they all say zero because anytime I get an order I cancel them because I just don't think it's right to compete against my customers um, which by the way I'm if anybody wants to buy them, I'm going to be putting them up for sale <laughs> later this year because I think it's a waste and I, I need to get them to a good owner that will take care of them because with them being over five years old, they're going to be like killer good sites. Okay. Um, so what I wanted to do was try to f open up something small that wouldn't compete um, with our customers. And I and I made sure about this and talked to a couple customers. Um, and I opened up this site and it really helped me because when I opened up my stores we didn't have the social networking aspect so I'm really going to take you in here and I'm really going to show you everything about this store now should you go and open up a quilting site no let me tell you why whatever store you open you need to love it you have to love what you're doing. You have to be passionate about what you're doing. You have to know what you're talking about. Because everything that I'm telling you that you need to do on this webinar is going to require that you know about your product. This is going to be hard work. But this is the tips that I give you today is for somebody that is like me, that I was that person 11 years ago. You know, maybe you're that mom who just left an, a very bad relationship and now you've got two kids or maybe you're a family struggling and you know you've just lost your job or whoever you are this is for you 
you know, this is for you. And I want you to choose a product that you're passionate about because I'm going to need you to talk to about your product. I'm going to need you to talk to other people about your product. I'm going to need you to write about your product. I'm going to need you to connect with other people about your product. So just because you see, oh, well, the quilting site is doing sales, doesn't mean that you do a quilting site. There um, was a, a guy that was teaching people how to do a wedding favor site, and then all of a sudden, like, 200 wedding favor sites open. And we talked to them, and they were like, what do you know about wedding favors? Nothing. What are you doing in the waver wedding favors industry then? And you know what? Those stores are not open today. So do not set yourself up for failure. You are setting yourself up for failure. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that you are selling a product that you know about or that you're willing to go learn about. You know, maybe it's something that you're not an expert in now, but you're willing to go to the library and order all the books that they have on it one at a time and read them constantly for new content. You've got to do this. There's no other choice. All, Otherwise, in two years, you're not going to be here at the next New Life event because you're not going to have a business. I'm sorry. That's the way it is. All right. So here's what we're going to go. I'm taking you literally through this whole step. So here's what happened. And last August, I actually started my own blog. And I didn't know that this was going to lead into this other site, but it really did help me. And, and it really did kind of set the stage for this store, but I didn't know that I was doing it at the time. So I started this private, or not this private, this separate blog called thatsoshauna.com. And basically, I just started out with posting things about my quilting journey, about learning how to quilt and um, learning how to put things together, um, being very frustrated. Uh, one of our guys here in the office got married, so I posted not only him getting married, but the quilt that I made for him. Um, and I just, you know, making a quilt sandwich. I, this was my very first quilt sandwich. This was a quilt I made for my mother. Here's my husband um, doing it. And then me saying, ta-da, did you notice my mistake? Huge mistake. The fabric's going in the wrong direction. And then when I turned over my quilt, look at what happened as well. And it's, this was just me being me. Really, that's all it was. It was me being me, talking about what I love. And then this idea came to me about opening up something and doing something a little bit different. All right. So then let me show you what happened. I'm going to start with the Google Analytics for that so Shauna. So as you can see, I started this on August 18th, and I started getting a little bit of traffic. And I started noticing um, this company, AccuQuilt. So this is my, I'm telling you guys, my whole strategy plan from um, from the start to now. So I hope you guys love this stuff. All right. So I started noticing this company, AccuQuilt, um, as I started following other blogs so that I could learn more quilting stuff. I started um, seeing AccuQuilt that they were going around to these big bloggers and they were giving away an AccuQuilt um, Go Cutter, which is like a $300 cutter. And then you were getting three dies with it. So basically, it's like a $500 prize. So let me do a little search on AccuQuilt Go Cutter uh, giveaway. All right, so here we go. Quilt Taffy AccuQuilt Go Cutter giveaway. Arian's Craft AccuQuilt Go giveaway. Cluck Cluck Sew AccuQuilt Go giveaway. I could go on and on and on. If you realize, there's 55,300 searches. So basically, this new company comes out and in order to get into the community of quilting, basically what they did is they went to some of the more famous, I would say, um, quilters, people who are in the space, and they said, sponsor giveaway a AccuQuilt Go Cutter. So basically what it is is that they gave not only the blogger a AccuQuilt Go Cutter and told them to please review it, but hey, we're also going to give one of your, one of your readers an AccuQuilt Go Cutter as well. Now, 
This created a huge buzz, as you can possibly imagine. A huge buzz. So I'm, going, I'm sitting back and I'm going, this is freaking brilliant. I mean, this is freaking brilliant. I mean, how much more brilliant can you get? Not only are you bringing in tons of links into your website, not only are you getting tons of people to talk about it, but you've also got people that you're sending over to your website to look at your products. Because guess what? Click here to learn about my giveaway. In order to win, all right, you have to... Um, leave a statement which three dyes you would choose and oh look at this that links over to their website and you have to go check out dyes so now I go over to their website and I'm looking at these dyes and I'm going oh I need this and I need this and oh, I didn't know that I can make this if I use their product now what do I want I want an AccuQuilt go cutter am I right I want it and I want it now so I'm trying to win one and I'm like looking at this and I'm like this is freaking brilliant I, look at this AccuQuilt Go Cutter giveaway 55,000 results this is huge and then I won one which then this was like so cool because let me tell you what I did so then what I did, and this is why you're going to see the huge spike in traffic right over, um, I think, uh, was it this one? Yes. So as you can see, I'm just kind of blogging and I'm kind of talking to myself, 0, 0, 11, 1, 3. Now, how did I get those three people to my blog? Well, let me tell you. I went over to some of these giveaways and I said, thank you, Amy Smart. What a great giveaway. I love what you're doing or I went to her tutorials and I left a comment and I said oh I can't believe you had that tutorial on how to make a quilt from start to finish that was so helpful thank you so very much I really loved it okay so here's the next step alright so the next step in the process was creating my own giveaway and seeing how that worked so first I started it out with making a quilt sandwich because I didn't want to be like Mm, let's try this out and it's all about me 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 and by the way I hope you don't mind but I might be going really really over here but I want you to see all of this so that maybe you can figure out your own plan so if you want me to hurry up please put in the questions box hurry Shauna alright so I, I come over here and I say here's what I'm giving away it's a picture perfect quilt kit so now I'm thinking let's let's do this are you ready to win here's your five chances to win post a comment give me advice say hi or just do it all you can post you can win um, have another chance to win by clicking on my follow button which is up here okay um, you can have another chance to win if you follow me on Twitter and this went to that's so Shauna so here's the Twitter that's so Shauna that will come up eventually and I'll show it to you if you tweet about the giveaway or post a comment um, and post a comment let me know you did and if you blog about this giveaway leave another comment okay so this is my very first giveaway how many people know about my blog right now uh, let's see actually at this point oh I'll have to fix that let's look at our Google Analytics at this point in the game because I want you to know, see exactly when that was uh, that was September 2nd so let's go look at our Google Analytics for September 2nd September 1st three people were on my site <laughs> two people August 30th alright so September 2nd I put that out there 51 people are now on my site as soon as I put that on there wait a minute 51 people just came to my site because I'm posting a giveaway and now they want to get to know me do you know how much this quilt cost me that cost me thirty five dollars holy cow can you imagine the marketing I can do with thirty five dollars I'm not talking immediate marketing like you know PPC marketing is Google AdWords where you're going to keep spending per click and I'm going to spend $35 a day and the problem is with that is that I'm spending $35 a day and maybe some of them will buy from me and then they're going to leave my site and I will never see them again. This $35 made it so that let's see how many 
comments I got. 60 comments on my blog of all people who now want to follow me, who want to get to know me, and who want to talk with me. Interesting. Very, very interesting. So now I'm going, all right, we got something good on our hands. We need, we need to do this a little bit more. We need to figure this out a little bit more. This is extremely interesting. So I took that information and I did another giveaway. And this is where you see those spikes. This is where you start seeing those little bit of spikes of, of, of information. So I bet you if I go to my blog from November 4th, I'm going to see another giveaway. So actually, let's go to November. And here's the 15th, the 9th, and whoop, there we go. Here we've got a, another giveaway, and here's me posting about books that I picked up, magazines that I've been reading, a new binding tool for me to try out. Oh, and I also have this. Um, just talking about quilting, um, Bloggers Quilt Festival. I entered in my quilt. Let's go to November 4th, please. Hello, hello. Oh, my granddaughters. Come on, come on. Okay, there we go. November 4th, I have a new one, and then bam. Same thing. If you want to enter in my contest five times, this is what you have to do if you want to win this. And guess what? Lots and lots of comments. So how many comments did we get that time? 108 comments. So remember, the first time I only got, I got 60 comments on my blog. Now I've got 108 comments. Not only that, I'm not selling them anything. I'm just talking to them. I'm getting to know them. I'm, I'm just talking. You know, I'm just talking. But here's the other great thing that you're noticing, though, is that see over here where there's, like, little people coming. When I start blogging, notice here I didn't blog. Here's a test. I didn't blog. They didn't come. I start blogging. They're coming to my site. It's not much, but they are coming. Christmas hit, and I wasn't blogging at all. You can see that. January comes, I start blogging, people start coming back to the website. But now it's time to go to One Choice for Quilting. All right, so now let's jump into the One Choice for Quilting site, which I say, oh, oh I'm so excited, I'm going to open up a store, and I put Grand Opening. Now, in the meantime, on Twitter, and I am going to show you my Twitter so that you can see that as well. In the meantime, I am building my own new brand as That's So Shada. This is my new brand. And with Shauna Siegel, I am, you know, I talk to everybody. I do this. I, you know, I, yeah, I follow back, you know, let's talk, let's meet. Um, I don't care who you are. I'm going to give everybody a chance. Now, for That's So Shauna, I am doing this completely differently because I'm trying to market totally different network of people. And I make sure you got to be, you, you know, I want to have something in common with you or, well, or if you're one of my customers, you know, <laughs> um, then, then I want to talk to you. But I'm doing this completely differently. I want to connect with people and I'm doing it very slowly. I am adding about 10 people a day and I'm making sure to message those people and I will show you how in just a little bit. All right, so now let's get rid of that, so Shauna, and move on to the next phase. So the next phase is I'm going to open up this quilting store. All right, so now let me show you some numbers on the quilting site. I was wondering what was going to happen with it. And what's really phenomenal when we look at, like, the numbers, let me show you, including the blog. Let me open up this. Because this is going to so some interesting information. So here's the little, little site. Here's me opening the site, January 23rd. And I wish I could make this bigger for you. I apologize. So let me create little highlighting points. I've opened up the store. I haven't told anybody I've opened up the store. I've just opened up the store. I didn't really do anything. Um, all right. I still opened up the store. I didn't really do anything. And then I put myself in a monkey suit, and I said, hi, I'm here. Okay? So that's something that you want to understand. Okay? This is for, like, the last 60 days. 
Um, oh, and the dashboard, yes, you're right, thank you. The analytics over here was, is, is showing a totally different time frame, thank you. So this shows the last 60 days. This is when I went out, I put on my monkey suit, and I said, I'm here. So how did I say, I'm here? How did I get into a monkey suit? <laughs> Let me show you. All right, so here's what I did. Let's look at my blog. Uh, let's go back to the very first one, and I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. This might take a minute, but as I do that, I'm also going to go to Facebook, and I'm actually going to show you the back end of my page as well so that you can see how I did this. Okay. And here I am in my monkey suit saying, grand opening, giveaway, all month long plus amazing specials. Okay, so here's what happened. At first, I did a 20% off coupon. This became really confusing to some of my um, um, older customers that maybe aren't used to shopping on the web. So I said, screw the coupon. Everything's 20% off. I really didn't want to do that, though, because I was really worried about non-people coming to the website, and I didn't want to give too much of the, of, uh, of the um, margin away. This is what most people would be thinking, right? Wrong. Give it up. Give it up. This is, this is the kind of thinking that you're probably thinking to yourself. Give up that extra margin because people have to like, know, and trust you. You've just opened up your store. Don't go to rock bottom prices. I'm not going to completely drop my prices down so that people are like, what's wrong with her? I got to pay $35 to get that jelly roll in my local quilt shop and she's going to charge me $20? What's wrong here? Is it fake? Is it not the same quality? You know, what is going on? So you've got to play that perfect little balance. You got to play it real cool. And you got to be very, very careful of how you do it. So that's what I did. I, uh, you know, and I marked down all these numbers. You know, what happened when I automatically changed it over to a 20% coupon and said, screw the coupon? Guess what happened? I got my very first order. As soon as I said, screw the coupon, I got an order. Interesting information, right? Okay, but here's the other thing I did. Just like my Gober said, I also hid the coupon code area because I didn't want them going and seeing it. So what am I talking about? I added the coupon code back in because I did send out a newsletter providing them a coupon. So what am I talking about? Let me open it up in a new window. Um, I'm going to click on a product. I'm going to add it to my cart. And I'm going to use checkout as a guest. And I'm going to scroll down, and it says this is the Yahoo store. If you have a coupon promotional code that can be redeemed, please enter that code now. One coupon per order. So this is where typically <laughs> you can lose a sale or you can get a sale. So what Mike Gober was saying is that if you don't have the coupons, just remove this. Because right now what's happening is my customers are going, I don't have a coupon. Um, do I need to go back and look at a Wait, does she have coupons? Wait, what's this? Um, oh, wait. Um, what, what? Wait about, wait. I, I was looking. Oh, forget it. I'm, I'm done. What happened to my sale? What happened to my sale? It's gone, right? That's what you call an abandoned cart. They're gone. So that's why. Get rid of the coupon area if you don't have coupons, or provide a little link that says, view all coupons. Throw them a bone. Say, sign up for my newsletter, and I'll give you 10% extra off. Uh, sign up for this, and I'll give you free shipping. Do something. Throw these people a bone or get rid of it entirely. I don't want you to lose it. All right, so what happened when I started doing this? All right, so I started this, and I said, okay, we're going we're gonna to do this big old thing, and it's a grand opening, and we're also doing a surprise gift. And if you order $50, we'll give you a surprise gift. If you order $100, we'll give you a charm pack, $200, a jelly roll. Did you know that that did not work on anybody? 
It didn't work on anybody. But you know what was brilliant is by using this giveaway, instead of sending out a newsletter to find out if it works or not works, I was able to just put up a blog post and find out it didn't work at all. These people were not interested in that at all all they did not care and you know why they didn't know me that well yes they kind of got to know me as that so Shauna but the same thing that happened for this weekend where you told somebody about the new life event then they came on and then they told two people and then they told two people and then they told two people those two people that just joined in have no idea who I am and they have no idea if they should like know and trust me so right now I have to spend time teaching or showing them that they can like, know, and trust me. So here's my problem. All those people coming to my site now, I have to get them to like, know, and trust me. So let's look at our very first giveaway and see how many people actually got involved and left comments. Well, our very first giveaway, let's see, we had, let me scroll down just a little bit more, 135 comments not bad remember we're growing a little bit more each time but here's something different that I did now here's something very different that I did now now I said as part of the five conditions in order to win now not five conditions I gave them five different opportunities to win they can do one or five I said head over to our store and leave us a comment telling us which jelly roll you would like so here is a go into your um, answers question and answers box right now because this is a pop quiz for a prize all right pop quiz why was putting head over to our store and leave us a comment telling us which jelly roll you would like to win an amazing idea you have to tell me mom I'm waiting for answers here Julie, Julie and Jerry both got it. Went too fast. I didn't see it. Got the customer involved. Yep, targeted marketing, Jerry. Absolutely. Yes, you too. <laughs> Absolutely, Jerry. <laughs> all right, mom. Well, I'll let you go through with them and 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 get their prizes because you've got you got better. Hold on that. So yes, this was targeted marketing. This was let, getting people more involved in the product. So look what happened. They clicked on this and then they come into Jelly Rolls and they're like, oh, look how pretty that is. Oh, look how pretty that is. Oh, I really love that. Oh, and that's what you do when you love fabric. I know probably some of you are like, I. Uh, you know, I, I don't get this, but for fabric lovers, you're going, you're drooling, you're drooling because you're like, oh, oh my God, look how cute this is. Oh, I love coffee. Oh, look how cute that is. And now they're like, oh, I have to win. So let me show you. Well, you can go on the blog and read some of this, but it's like, congrats on your grand opening. This is so exciting. I feel your energy. My favorite is jelly rolls, lily and blue. Let me tell you what else I learned and I bet you will never ever guess this and I'm gonna make haha <laughs> nobody guessed this nobody guessed this at all here's the other thing that I learned how do I know now this is totally different for me because I didn't know um, I've always done drop shipping I've never had to invest in products right I have to take a drink sorry guys mm. okay I didn't know buying inventory what the hell am I doing I don't know what's going to be popular I kind of knew because I could kind of look at all the different quilting blogs and find out what people are making so I kind of had an idea but I mean look at these I mean I don't know if Max and Whiskers should I buy four of those or should I buy eight of those Carla that's right I did an indirect survey I got to find out what are their favorites and what I learned is there was this um, um, there was this jelly roll that's called and let me try to find it on here because it is absolutely beautiful buttercup so here's what I had done I had bought these like little jelly rolls and then what I did is I bought some yardage to go with it and I picked what I thought would be everybody's favorite guess what 
I didn't buy any yardage of Buttercup. Yardage is what you do um, like to frame the outside of a, a quilt. I didn't buy anything for Buttercup, and guess what? It was the number one pick. Duh. Hello. Now I just know what to buy. Everybody told me what to go buy from my distributor, and I didn't have to say, um, can you tell me what product to go buy because I don't know what I'm doing, which I really don't, but <laughs> not when it comes to quilting. I don't know what I'm doing when I'm going to quilting. I'm not an expert at this yet. I do know I'm learning. I'm talking about it. I love talking about it. Um, I love doing it. I love posting pictures with my grandbabies with their quilts. So I am actively involved, but you know, I don't know that Buttercup is going to outsell Max and Whiskers, but they do. And every time I've done one of these surveys and one of these drawings, I ask them questions. Because here's the other thing. Let me show you um, a recent, let me show you another one that I did. Go to February. Um, let's see. Our next winner. Okay, this one right here. I'm giving away four yards of... Um, sun kissed by um, by Moda. Okay, now I decided to give yards away. I'm going to give four yards away before I had given pre what's called pre cuts. So just I'm going to give you a quick like thing on on quilts only so you can understand this. And I'm very very sorry. In the quilting world, there's pre cuts where um, they're already cut for you to save you time. And I spent a lot of my money for inventory on what's called jelly rolls and some on charm packs. And I didn't spend that much money on yardage because I thought more people might be interested um, in these pre-cuts because it would save them time. So I did another indirect survey and guess what I found out? People like those pre-cuts, but they like them in bundles. And they also like like half yards. But the Jelly Rolls and Charm Packs was maybe about a fourth. So let's go to my bundles page. Anybody see a problem here? Anybody? Now here's my other problem that I'm dealing with. I'm working a full-time job. I am working a full-time job. I also had a second job, which was doing the New Life event. And I'm trying to do this. I'm not devoting all my time to this. I'm trying to devote as much time as I feel like you could because this is you trying to do it as well. I'm trying to put myself in your shoes, okay? So now I have to figure out how to do what these customers want. And Jerry just called it. You don't have the products people want now. Exactly. Exactly. And how did I find that out? I gave away. And you know what? This was the best information I could get. And I'm giving away four yards of fabric to get that information. And this giveaway is not over yet. Um, four yards of fabric in retail term or wholesale terms cost me $20. But let me show you what this $20 also got me besides, besides great feedback. 200 comments on the blog, and I still have two today, uh, to Sunday and Monday to get more comments. Let me show you what else it's gotten me. My $20 investment. Uh, 90 followers for this Google, but here's the best one. 697 likes on Facebook. 697 people that are interacting with me on Facebook. I couldn't even get that many people to like the new life event. And I'm like, hello. <laughs> yeah, 697. Now look at this. These people are interacting. These people are constantly putting up messages. I love this page. Um, I'm trying to leave a comment. Um, I wrote, um, oh, what's really interesting, I threw this in to see what would happen. I wrote a new blog post that explains a little bit more about who I am. And I kind of told them my story and about the new life event. 
Yeah, 0.38% feedback. They hated it. That was a great test. They hated it. They didn't want to know nothing about Shauna Siegel, the brand. They didn't want to know nothing about her. They didn't care about her. They were not impressed. Screw Shauna Siegel. We don't care. That was, that was fun. <laughs> Talk about blow to your ego. Um, <laughs> Anyway, all right, so, but what was great is look at this, you know, one choice for quilting when we first did this, this got 12, uh, almost 1,200 impressions on Facebook. I can't buy that kind of advertising for free. Do you understand that comment? I can't buy that kind of advertising for free. So this is why it's been so important to build up this buzz and as you can see I try to answer people and I try to get involved and I'm trying to talk with them and what's really great is that I'm these people are also starting up discussions and I'm trying to um, keep up with the discussions as well but again it's hard I work a full-time day job you work a full-time wow I didn't know that this had moved on I gotta get back over there but I've been busy with the new life event you know but this is what I'm talking about so somebody said well how can you afford to give away free if you're starting out well here's the thing I'm, I'm either going to put my money, I could either put $100 into pay-per-click marketing or I figured I can invest some of my, put, invest some of this money back into building relationships. And that's what I did. So, now that you've seen how I got people to my site, now that you've seen my marketing plan, now that you've seen all of that, would you guys like to see the sales that it brought in? I thought you'd say yes. I'm going to grab Diet Coke. <laughs> All right. So, mind you, we are still, you have to do this. Um, we still have to get people to like, know, and trust us. They don't like, know, and trust us, but I'm feeling very confident. So, now we're going to go into the one choice for quilting site. And now we're going in to go into the reports. And before I do that, I'm actually going to show you a very interesting image. Um, not that one. This is, okay. Let me bring this over here. And let me bring this over here. And I know this is going to look funny, but please hold on. Okay. Um, so I'm looking in my store, and I'm sorry I can't show you this right now because I had to take these screenshots when it happened. Okay. Um, I went in here, and I looked at this um, information, and I saw that we had 106 people that were in the shopping cart, 106 hits, okay, hits. Um, the Yahoo store, it's not like perfect analytics, but it you know, not, not Yahoo Analytics. Yahoo Analytics, it's great. The references in this back end of the Yahoo store, it's not perfect, but it will give you trends. That's what I needed was trends. So here's the trends that, you know, about half the people that visited um, the Jelly Rolls page also visited the shopping basket. So let's take a look at the sales as of that day. So the sales as of then was one sale out of all those people. So we had over 100 hits and only one sell for $51. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Are you serious? All right, so what is it? So what is the answer? I knew exactly what it was. So what I did is I set up this store um, to only accept PayPal and nothing else nothing else at all. That's all I wanted to accept was PayPal. I did this on purpose so that I could show you this image. Okay. On the day that I um, put in and I uh, put in to put, accept all credit cards, um, not only did I immediately get another sale, but three days later I got another sale. And if you look at this type of information that we get, um, you can look that the conversion rate was much, much higher too as soon as I put in that we accept all credit cards and not just PayPal. That was 
one of those things that I really wanted to prove. <laughs> and this was a, you know, I mean, it's not foolproof proof, but the thing is, is that um, I noticed with the Yahoo store that with PayPal, when you only just accept PayPal, it gets kind of confusing. And we kept seeing all these people coming to the cart. So here's what I've been trying to do with this store, and I hope you'll understand why. I keep trying to make um, common mistakes that I see store owners do. Um, I'm trying to make those mistakes so that I can show you this is what happens when you do it. This is what happens when you correct it. Um, did you add... Yes, I added eMerchant, <laughs> of course. They're the only company I would use. So now I use PayPal and I have eMerchant processing the credit cards. Immediately picked up that sale. Now, let's talk about what's going on now. Um, what's going on now is the store's been officially open for 25 days now. It's had six orders for a total of $385, which I'm very happy for being in its first month. I'm very happy. Right now we're getting orders every three days. This is a brand new store. I actually feel like three, every, an order every three days um, is too much to be getting in our first month. But then again, I am trying to stand out there with my monkey suit as much as possible saying, I'm here, I'm here, will you please come visit me? So. Now I want to show you all the ways that I act in my monkey suit. Um, do you guys want to take like a quick break because I know that we didn't get a break last time and um, I, I have like a lot of information. I'm going to show you like SEO and I'm going to show you some like other really great information and we could just take like a three minute quick break. Water? Yes. Okay. So it's 9.58. We're going to take a, like a three-minute break, get up, relax, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you like different things in my SEO and how I'm going to change it to make myself rank better. I'm going to show you what I do on Twitter to connect with other people, um, and then I'll show you all of this. I promise you. I will show you. And if you guys have to go because it's getting late, it's 10 o'clock at night, I totally understand. I am recording this for you. I promise I'll make it available as soon as possible. Um, and But anyway, let's just go ahead and take a three-minute break, um, and we'll come right back. I promise. Okay? So we'll be back in three minutes. All right, if you all don't mind me, like, smoking while you guys are still on your break. Um, in great memory, are you only accepting PayPal on your site? Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> Shop High Five said, what's three more minutes? We've been here 12 hours. <laughs> I love you, Shop High Five. Yeah, that's a really good point, Shauna. <laughs> <laughs> I just absolutely love that. Uh, let me look at her site real quick and see if that's the case. Okay, let me try this. Let, let, let me just add something in here if I could. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Would it be correct to say that all of this is SEO? No. What would you term term this as being? Everything that you're doing for the blog, for um, the the. Um... Um, well, here's the great part: with me connecting with my customers, it does go towards SEO as well. But this is yeah. marketing the business. What's really great is it falls under SEO. It falls under social networking. It falls under, wow, I'm connecting with my customers. Um, it falls under the fact that the more I share with people, um, the more they're willing to give back to me. For instance, um, highly impressive, I shared a little bit more about myself, shared my granddaughters, and immediately I got a $200 order. So, what does that tell you? I mean, people are so scared to admit that they're like a small business or that they're working from their home or that they're a mom. And yet, I post pictures of my grandkids and this, you know, quilt that I made, and here's a tutorial for you to do it too. Actually, here it is, new tutorial. Um, here's my grandbabies turning three years old, and here's our Diego, the horse. Um, he he's like he's like my dad. He wants to be in every picture because you know dad was an actor. Dad's an actor, and Diego wants to be an actor. Uh, <laughs> and here's the other one I did for my other granddaughter because you know they're twins. And here's her snuggling. And then I made a tutorial on how to do it. And then I shared this information. I got let them get to know who I am as a grandmother, and then bam, I got a two hundred dollar order. Where before that, all of the orders were like twenty five dollars or thirty dollars, and bam, I got a two hundred dollar order because she wrote to me and said, "Oh, I love what you're doing. I'm a grandmother too. I love making quilts for my granddaughters." And now we've connect, created a connection. We've created a friendship. Okay, but if uh, let's, I'm a search engine. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing that your page views went up. I'm seeing those metrics going up. I'm seeing that people have gone through different um, through different pages, and you've got more people into your site. As a search engine, I'm impressed. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to rank you higher than somebody that's done nothing. Exactly. 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 So the question came up. I don't understand what's the difference between PayPal and merchant account because I thought that PayPal did act as a merchant account. PayPal does have a merchant account service. It's very expensive, but they do. What I had set up is that they could only use PayPal. So if you didn't have that PayPal set up to use credit cards, actually you've got it set up the way that I did. So now I'm your customer and I'm going, um, what? Now let's look at this from a customer's perspective. I, I, I really want you to look at this from a customer's perspective. I'm trying to put in my credit card info and you want me to go to PayPal. I don't want to use PayPal. I, I don't know anything about PayPal. I heard PayPal was hacked. Did you know that they actually did take down PayPal? They did. They shut it down. It was in the news. How do I not know that my credit card is going to get hacked? They were hacked. They were brought down recently. Do you see what I'm saying? Look at this. You are saying, yes, you accept credit cards, but it's all about PayPal. Now let's go over to my cart. Now that I've added eMerchant, let's look at my cart and see what it looks like. Oh, i got to add a product. Hold on. What's hot? Scrap bag, add to cart. All right. Now I'm going to go to guest checkout. And by the way, yes, I'm using plain buttons because I'm going to test how working, changing from plain buttons to pretty buttons increases conversions. Um, so now let's look at the difference. And I'm going to show you the difference between just accepting PayPal and just accepting 
uh, or accepting both. So here's the difference. Um, here's the credit card information for the customer to put in. They don't have to go to another website or they can use PayPal. So let's go back to, over to this website where it's all about PayPal. Now, yes, you can do Express Pay with PayPal. Uh, you can just go directly here. But you have to remember that they've taken all this time to like, know, and trust us. Are we absolutely positive that they've taken the time to like, know, and trust PayPal? Not everyone has done that. Now, you may think, well, yeah, it's PayPal. That's you and me. We're business to business. We get that. Go ask the lady at McDonald's that's sitting next to you if she gets that, and she may not. Yes, you can set up the checkout to take credit cards right on the cart, but that's also going to cost you twice as much money, which is why I use a merchant. So, but, but if you, that, that's why I say take the $250 challenge, because they will save you money. So that's the difference. Engraved, I hope I answered that for you. I really do, because that's the difference between doing it on one site and then the other. So let's get back to this information, because I have a lot of like really cool stuff I want to do. Okay. Um, let's get over to, okay, so this is the Yahoo store. And the way that I looked at that information, by the way, when you have the Yahoo store, there's a couple of different ways. Remember, not all of this is exactly perfect, accurate. None of the analytics that you're looking at will be. Um, it, it helps you to look at trends. That's a big thing you want to look at is trends. And one of the big things I'm going to tell you right now, just because it worked on one choice for quilting does not mean it's going to work on your site. Now, the PayPal one, that's that's pretty like 99 i'm going to say 99% positive as soon as you set that up and have, accept credit cards you will see an instant increase in conversions there's some things that are tried and true but a lot of this other stuff like offering a free gift with purchase for these customers it didn't work i could open up a totally different quilting site and it would work with them you know so definitely do that okay all right so let's go with this um all right, so now we're going to go into, let's talk SEO. Let's talk SEO. You know what? Actually, hold on. Well, since we're still talking the social and getting to like, know, and trust, I'm going to show you Hootsuite and what I'm doing in there to also connect with other people. Then I'm going to get into the SEO because that's one of my favorite topics. So let me bring over Hootsuite in here and give it a moment to let it do its thing. Now, as you can see up at the very top, I've got a couple of different tabs. Now, I've just started using this. I used to be TweetDeck all the way. TweetDeck, TweetDeck, TweetDeck. But the problem is, is that um, on TweetDeck, you only get one of these. On Hootsuite, I can make one for Shauna. I can make one for the New Life event. I can make one for e-commerce. I can use one for the Facebook pages. So basically, um, you're wondering how can you keep up when you've got thousands of people. Well, sometimes you have to put on a different hat. Sometimes I have to put on my quilting hat. Sometimes I have to put on my e-commerce hat. And sometimes I have to put on my grandmother hat. Um, for many of us, we are used to putting on our different hats all the time. And that's the way it is with Twitter. You're just going to have to put on a different hat. So this is what I do. Um, I just go into my That's So Shauna, and now it's time for me to connect with people. And if you look, what's really interesting is I was doing very good with connecting with people, talking with people, until I started talking about the New Life event. And I tested this because I was trying to connect with them about the New Life event, but it wasn't working. Why wasn't it working? They don't care about the new life of it. That's not their deal. And why is it that way? Because I'm connecting with quilters, not business people. I'm connecting with quilters. I want quilters, not business people. So of course they're not going to care about that. So how am I going to, to actually market my potential customers? Here's another little thing that Hootsuite does that I absolutely love. They can combine keywords that I want to um, search for and kind of like keep an eye on. So, for instance, one of the things that I'll keep an eye on is the keyword quilting and also the keyword mode of fabric. You can have this all in one comment. One in comment, column. Let me grab a drink. Sorry, guys. All right, so. Let's say that um, I've caught up with everybody, and now it's time for me to start meeting new people. 
So um, you got to be really careful about like spammers and stuff like that. But um, what I'm looking for now is like um, this person says, great practicing. I might have to um, pebble quilting in mind for you have some pebble quilting in mind for you. So maybe I might write back and I might say something about, I haven't tried pebble quilting. What is, you know, do you have any um, tips on how I can do that? Going to come over here, didn't change out of my PJs all day, day and I'm about to start quilting. Um, I can respond back. And I'm not going to add maybe right away, but I'm going to respond back and say, oh my gosh, I am still in my pajamas too. All right. Next person, stop for supper. I have the grumets and the handles with some quilting on the handles to go. Hope to finish by the time Bobby comes back. What are you making? Um, do you have a picture? That sounds interesting. Um, there's always somebody over here that I can connect with. I don't care what topic that you are going to put me on Twitter with. I don't care what you're selling. There's somebody that you can just jump right into a conversation. There always is somebody that you can do that. And then once, you know, these people who are mentioning quilting, they'll start seeing the name a couple of times. And after you kind of talk to them a little bit, then I'll, you know, kind of look at them, check them out. And if they're kind of bigger names on there, then I'll add them. And I'll add them as that Soshana. You know, I'm not ready to add them yet to one choice for quilting. I don't want to sell them yet. That's the difference between having a, a personal blog and having this um, business blog. It's the one choice for quilting. I'm trying to keep that a little more business oriented, but that's so Shauna. I'm keeping it personal so they can get to know me. They can get to like me. And oh, by the way, did you know I have a store? I'm not doing direct selling. But I'm letting them get to like, know, and trust me. And then when they look at my profile, I have a store. Did you know that? So this is interesting. At home, drinking a beer and quilting. So should we put something up like QUI, you know, quilting under the influence? There's a great way that we can do this. So I'm going to send out maybe three or four tweets just from my keywords of people not on my list. Then over here, I'm going to use the That's So Shauna feed, and I'm going to respond, retweet, or do something for another three or four people here. Then I'm going to go to One Choice feed, and I'm going to do the same thing. Now, I'm not going to sit down at one time and do it, and then I'm done for the day. What I do is I set up little reminders on my to-do list, and I try to sit down and do this. I'm not always good at it, so don't like hold me down to this and say, Shauna, you didn't do your 12 o'clock tweet. It doesn't always work with that. So I'll try to do it in the morning. Then I'll try to do like another five minutes in the afternoon and then in the evening. Um, and that's how I try to separate it out. And that way it looks like I'm on Twitter and I'm talking and it's, you know, interactive and it's all day when it's, you know, it's just like a couple minutes here, a couple minutes there, a couple minutes there. Um, trying to retweet great information. Here's the other thing that I did that really, really, really helped me to get more followers that were related to what I'm doing. Um, I created the one choice for quilting news and that gets re retweeted um, and people love it and it really is wonderful because um, people love to see that their name is in the news and people love to see um, that they're being talked about so what I did is I took some of those big bloggers that I love because um, there are some big ones in the industry and I went to paper.li and I created one choice for quilting news and it's so easy it's so easy you can create one with a hashtag you can create one with a like Melissa talked about Twitter list so basically what I did is I created a Twitter list of quilt bloggers and I don't have to follow them if I don't want to but all I have to do is put them on my quilt bloggers list and immediately they show up here every 24 hours it automatically um, sends it out. It's great because it even picks up videos. It can pick up um, uh, pictures. And let me tell you, this takes this takes one minute to set up after you have your list. It's absolutely wonderful. Now, what happens though is that all this goes out. You can see the live Twitter stream going on from Quilting News. That's my list, and it gets people involved. Now, yes, it's not that big right now. But it's gotten 23 tweets and 60 people or, or 65 views. And I've got two subscribers. And you know what? I just started this like a week ago. 
and it took me literally like to do the to actually set up the list and set this up I would probably say probably took me a total of about 20 to 25 minutes and I can see the traffic coming like from there and see more people adding specifically from that um, Jackie, if you want to know specifically how to set this up, it's paper.li. I also have an e-commerce one that I do. So if you ever see like the e-com experts daily, just click on it and it will take you to it um, where you can just look, create a paper and you sign in with your Twitter or Facebook and that's it. You really don't have to do anything. It's absolutely wonderful. So. Uh, it just I highly 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 recommend that so that's my Twitter plan marketing that I'm going to do for one choice for quilting now you've seen the marketing side for the blog and for Facebook and getting to know people now you've seen my Twitter marketing now let me show you my SEO plan of attack all right I am going to close this window and I'm going to go into my favorite, 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 favorite spot of the Yahoo store. Underneath statistics, I'm going to click on references. This is my favorite part of a Yahoo store. And what's really sad is most people um, don't know about this, um, that, that this is here in your Yahoo store. Web Wendy wanted to know real quick, how is the newsletter better than blogging? Um, that specific paper LI newsletter is done automatically. It's amazing. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is set up a Twitter list of blog of, of Twitter people and anything that any link that they send out or we treat will automatically be put into that little newspaper. So make sure it is a good person that you <laughs> make sure it's a good person that they're not like sending out like trash. Um, when you put them on that list and you know pay attention when you first set it up if people are sending like nasty links out so all it does it takes all those links that people are sending it out so it's paperli.com all right um, all right so now I'm going to be in the references all right let's look at our traffic so we can see that we're getting a lot of traffic from the blog but what I'm mostly concerned about is Google because our store's only been open for a very short time and I want to see what's happening with Google because you know it can take some time to get in here okay and it can take time for Google to find me so what I'm finding is is that they're finding us by very long tail keywords so what are long tail keywords alright um, am I gonna be found under fabric no Am I going to be found under quilting? No, not at all. But Moda Simpler Time Jelly Roll. All right, let's see where we're ranking in that. Uh, looks like the Moda Simpler Time Jelly Roll. We're on the very first page. One, two, three, four, five, right underneath Amazon. So how did I do that? Well, in our references, all I did was click on this but I always do it in a new tab so I can stay here because it makes the like loading time a lot less by the way alright so now here's what I'm gonna do this is my trick that if you've ever seen this before you know how much I love it I want to know why I'm not ranked number one besides the fact that it's been I don't have a lot of time okay I don't have a lot of time on me but I would like to know how Google's looking at my page as far as relevancy what have we learned this weekend about content what's the second most important thing about the content anybody very good question original and it's got to be relevant thank you so now let's look at this all right I'm gonna go ahead and click on the cached version I'm gonna do it in a new tab so I want you to let me go do this. Um, we're in Google. Let me go to Google. I can't even do that. Okay. Now this is going to help you really understand what I'm trying to accomplish. Okay. Um, when I look at um, you know something like this picture of sprinkles on a cake or this picture of sprinkles on a cake it looks professional but it really does look a little bit too much in my taste um, when I look at this 
this is way too many sprinkles. I mean, this is overdoing it. You're thinking to yourself, Shauna, what the hell does sprinkles have to do with SEO? I promise you will understand in just a minute. Okay? This, you know, that one with sprinkles looks like a professional didn't do it. I want you to think of sprinkles like this as spam. We don't want sprinkles. Okay? We want to have a professional bakery of sprinkles. We want our sprinkles to look good. We want them to be evenly distributed across our entire cake. Um, look at this one. Look at how the sprinkles are, you know, perfect. There's not too much. They're all around. Let me show you why I'm mentioning sprinkles. When I take a look at the cache version of my page, do you guys see the highlights here? They almost look like little sprinkles on a cake, right? What I'm looking for in that cached version is they're showing me the words that people were searching for and the words on my page that match. Now, if I've got a little bit of sprinkle going on all over this page, then I'm going to be relevant to what people are looking for. If I've covered this page with sprinkles, I have spammed. <laughs> I have spammed badly. But it also helps me to see that, you know, they were looking up a simpler time by Moda, and I have missed something extremely important in this description. Can anybody tell what sprinkle I missed in this description? What sprinkle have I missed? I'm a baker that did something completely wrong. Can anybody tell? Moda. Brenda, yes, Moda. I missed Moda. So maybe if I include the word Moda, a simpler time by Holly Taylor, Moda? Then if I just add that one term, Moda, do you think maybe, just maybe, I might get ranked to number four or number three? I might, but instead I screwed up. I've got perfect little sprinkles up here. I've got a little tiny sprinkle. I've got a little bit more sprinkles all over here, but over here it's like dead. I got like, ugh, I, I like forgot a spot of sprinkles. So let's go look at some more pages like that. That's why I want you to look at those sprinkles, by the way. Um, Wild Rose, let's look at this one. Let's see where we're ranking and how we can make it like work better, how we could get higher rankings. All right, so uh, looks like maybe we were on page one and then we dropped down, which is not a good sign. Uh, uh, usually I look at, try to do like page one, page two, page three, and if it's not there, that's fine. So we moved off of the page. Who knows what happens? This is also something that you'll see with new stores, by the way. You'll be ranking and you'll be doing good. And then all of a sudden, where did it go? All right, Sun Kissed by Sweetwater. This is a huge fabric line. It's extremely popular right now. Hugely popular right now. Let's go check it out. Now, here's what happens when you click on the link directly from Yahoo, which is why I love Yahoo so much. It takes you to the page where you are ranked on, not where you're ranked on now, where you were when, that, when those people came in. I was ranked on number 23. Yuck. Big yuck. All right, so now I'm going to go back because when those people came in, I was ranked number 23. Thank you for coming in. I love you. But I'm going to go go to 10 and I believe last time I checked it was on page three or four I think it's on four all right so here is that ranking now and I've left these pages alone so that way I could share them with you this weekend all right so now why are we ranked why did we go to 23 all the way up to um, on the page three well I'll show you that in just a minute, too. So now let's click on the cached version. By the way, does everybody understand how to look at the cached version? All right, so um, I'll show it to you here. Let me get out my little highlighter tool. So we have our search that we've done up here, okay? And then if you look, cached, 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 cached. This is the cached version. Basically, this is going to show you what it looked like the last time Google visited this page. So that's what we're looking at. Now we're going to click on that link. And I always click it in a new tab so I can go back to it. That's just my habit. Sorry. Now what's happening is this is Google's cache of this page. And we'll also, if you look up here, tell you the snapshot of this page appeared February 22nd. Why is that important? Well, 
if I make a change to this page on February 26th and my rankings have moved, then I know, um, well, that's because Google hasn't visited this page again and you better be patient, Sean, and go work on something else. Okay, now let's say it says, well, shoot, they were in this page today and it still hasn't moved? Ugh, okay, what happened? What do I need to change? Or I can say, oh my God, they came and now I'm on page 23 again. Oh crap, what did I do? I always leave notes. I like to leave myself notes. Um, what I do to leave myself notes, this is a big tip for you guys. I use Remember the Milk when I'm doing this kind of work. And I specifically put in a task and I put in this like keyword phrase, which is the Sunkiss Limeade by Sunkiss Sweetwater. So I put that in as a task and I start building notes. On this day did this, this day did this, this day did this, and I've got the dates, I got what I changed as well. That's very, very, very important. I want the changes. I want to know what I did because if I ever move back after I see that the cache has been updated, I can go, crap, okay, I got to undo that. If you don't keep notes and a month later this gets updated, holy cow, then you're in trouble. Of course, we always want to try to make it so that we're not doing anything at all that gets you in trouble with Google, okay? They, we don't want to do anything at all that's going to get you in trouble with Google. There are a lot of these little schemes and things that you can do for quick placements on, on Google, and, and I don't want you to do that. Okay, I don't want you to do that because the thing is, is that in five years from now, you're not going to be here if you focus on those type of things. When Google makes another change, you're going to call me and go, oh, all my rankings are gone and all my sales dropped and I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't want you to do that. If you follow these basic rules of great content and all of this, you're going to be okay no matter what Google does. All right, that's the truth. That's the truth. Okay, so now let's go on and continue with this great stuff. I love teaching you guys this stuff. This stuff is so much fun to me. Let's look at our sprinkles. So we got sprinkle sprinkles up here. We've got lovely sprinkles up here. Look at our look at our um look at our relevancy for this page. We've got sun kiss sweet water. I'm gonna show you relevancy from top to bottom. Let me um let me grab my spotlight. Here is our title tag that I've optimized for all kinds of really great um, keywords that my customer might use. Sun-kissed lime aid by Sweetwater for Moda. So if they look up sun-kissed by Moda, we've got it. Sun-kissed by Sweetwater, we've got it. Sun-kissed Moda skew, we've got it. We're covered. So this is our title tag. Now we get to the next aspect. Our breadcrumbs are right here, and look, they are relevant to the keyword phrase, sun kiss sweet water. We go to our title of the item, sun kiss sweet water. It's very relevant. Let's go ahead and move down the page and look at our description. Look at that. Don't you think we could move up in rankings if we actually included the terms sweet water and moda into these descriptions? Did this on purpose. What would happen if we actually included Sunkiss Sweetwater by Moda Fabric? We would get the rankings. Now, all of this is unique content, but we've written this unique content without focusing on the keywords. But we also are not going crazy, and we're not dumping a whole bunch of sprinkles right here in this one thing. Think about it. This all makes sense. This all sounds beautiful. What comes to mind at the mention of the word sun kiss? If you think of colors worn by the sun, you're already spot on. Now, here's a great place to put in our keywords. The sun kissed Moda fabric by Sweetwater and signature print includes words like sunshine, hope, renew, and life, sure to be a summer favorite. Did that sound more natural? I didn't say Sunkiss Moda Sweetwater. What comes to mind when you mention the word Sunkiss? Well, if you're thinking of colors, then Sunkiss Sweetwater by Moda is absolutely spot on because the Sunkiss Sweetwater sprint prints, bleh, all Sweetwater Sunkiss bolts are sold in one yards, and these great Sweetwater Sunkiss, that's too many sprinkles. 
Sprinkles, sprinkles, sprinkles. It's too many. We don't need that many sprinkles. Here's the other thing. Notice my cross cells. I would be a lot better off if I changed these cross cells to products that actually had the terms Moda, brand name, or even Sunkist. These terms that people were looking for. I would get some sprinkles down here. So now you're seeing how sprinkles work. Okay? Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. So this is what you can do. Go into your references, look up this type of information. You can go in, you can look them up. You can even, what's really interesting, and why did that go there? Um, you can go in and look at other people's sprinkles, and you can try to understand why you're ranked here, why you're ranked there. Sometimes, you know, this is Etsy. Well, you know, Etsy's been around a long time. Well, let's go look at their sprinkles, though. Well, that doesn't look real good, but, you know, we can kind of get an idea. This is what they've got going on for sprinkles, and look at all the different sprinkles they've gotten the first paragraph. Oh, and then they do it again down here in their tags. So, you know, they've got a little bit more sprinkles on the page than we did. Well, that's why they're number one and we're in number four. <laughs> Carla says, I now love sprinkles. You know, it would say, the sprinkle concept is like the easiest way I can explain it to you guys, that we want to make sure that our pictures don't look like those ugly, nasty, you know, I don't want it to look, I don't want your pages to look like my three-year-old twins opened up the bottles and poured sprinkles on your page. Yes, it's cute. Yes, it's adorable, but you don't want to eat it. <laughs> all right, so I think I've covered all of this. I think I gave you some major insight. I really hope you guys learned a lot. Um, I hope you guys have, have um, enjoyed this. I hope that you guys understand that I am going to keep documenting all of this. I'm going to keep updating you on all of this. I am going to um, share all of these numbers with you. I'm going to share my, my thoughts, my process of how I got there, because I don't want to just tell you that, oh, well, I decided to do a giveaway. I want you to understand why I decided to do a giveaway. I want you to understand why I decided to do it the way I did. Um, you know, it was because, if you notice, there are people out there, by the way, I don't know if you caught that, and I don't think I mentioned that, when people are, <laughs> the best thing that you can do is get some links into your site, right? So let me show you what the other great thing about the giveaways that I learned, <laughs> that you're going to learn real quick here. Uh, I'm going to go to our Moda giveaway for this, you've got people who are actively on there sharing the message on Twitter, which is bringing um, more um, spiders, the, the spiders into my website. So here's what's happening. Um, with this, this is like, uh, this will help you understand it. With this giveaway and people going out on Twitter and saying, by the way, come to Shauna's website because she's got a giveaway. And look at Robin. She blogged about the giveaway. So she put a link to her from her website to my blog. And let's see, we go on a little bit further, and you've got other people on here that um, I blogged, I tweeted, I sent this out, I follow your blog, I'm doing this. Now, besides all of this good stuff of networking and all of that, guess what? I also now have just hired a couple more. I don't want to call them monkeys because that would be rude because they are lovely people. But in essence, if we're thinking of the marketing monkeys, I've now basically got three monkeys that are out there going, hey, guess what? Shauna opened up her store right down here, down this alley. Did you know that? How awesome is that? Not only are they telling other people, but Google doesn't know that your site exists until somebody tells them about it. So now you've got other people saying, Google, hey, guess what? Shauna's site's over here. And it's natural because it's part of a giveaway and it's not spamming. And the great part about it is that they are telling other people about it on quilting sites. How beautiful is that? It's relevant. It's relevant. Okay. So, um, Mama, do we have questions? And I hope everybody enjoyed that. 
Actually, we did have a couple of questions. They go back to uh, the beginning because everybody towards the end was going, wow, 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 wow. So <laughs> you, you got them with questions in the beginning, and then the rest was, wow, 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 wow. So it was, and, and I'm absolutely amazed by you, again, at all of the things that you do. So I'm so proud of you. Aww. It's just amazing what you did. I, I, this, is, this stuff is just amazing, Sean. Um, oh, can I, put that on hold? can I put that on hold for a second? Sure. Okay. Um, here's the other thing I wanted to do for you guys because I love education. Um, by the way, you can still get your four months free, free Y store, but that wasn't what I wanted to give you all tonight. Um, here's my big one. And please don't tell anybody else that you're getting this. Go to onechoiceforyourstore.com. Oh, I guess I should have put that in here. Um, you've got a $200 gift card. One choice for your store. I don't want to get in too much trouble over some of this, but anyway, you've got a $200 gift card called Education that I want you to use on training. Okay, It's good for the training, and I also made it good for the graphic kits. So that's what it's for. It's for your education. 